No, Leslie, please. It, tonight's kind of a big night. You know, all my kids are away and... Gross! No, it's Jerry's sex night. That ruins sex and tonight. I've had too much whiskey. I cook myself a large flank steak, pan-fried and salted butter. I eat that, put on a pair of wet socks, and go to sleep. Hey, everyone, and uh, we're having this special... Well, it's not special, just a regular-ass fucking episode. My bad. But uh, we have a... What? Well, it's in Pawnee. Yeah, we're having it in uh, good old Pawnee, Indiana. We got uh, these two dads, a man's man, a good man. We got Jerry Gergich and... Uh, Ron motherfucking Swanson. Hello, Adam. How you doing, sir? Doing good, man. I love anything Indiana. Just like the Pacers and the Colts. Jake. What's up, Jake? Jake. What up, man? And uh, huh. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. That's all you got to know about Indiana. Yeah. Wait, wait. Is, is, that, <laughs> is Notre is Dame in Indiana? Man. Let me Google yes. it. So I can talk shit about Rudy. Make everyone from Indiana cry. What was I Googling about? Re Reggie Miller. <laughs> Reggie Miller is what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Notre Dame? Oh, shit. It's in Indiana. Rudy. What? Rudy. That guy. Deacon Poole. I think they should make a Rudy 2 already. Where he's in the NFL? <laughs> That'd be even funnier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he plays for one down. And it's and still like it. Sean Astin playing in. <laughs> yeah, but he's like 50. NFL. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, it'll be so good. So I guess he'll play for the Colts. Hey, what was that Mark Wahlberg movie where like he played for the. He's like a regular guy and he played for the Eagles? Invincible? Uh, Invisible? Know. Mark Wahlberg? I don't know. It's not uh, Transformers. It's not no. Pain and Gain, so I don't know. Is no. it the one where he shows his dick? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Okay. Boogie Boogie Nights. That's the Boogie title Nights. you're looking for. Yep. <laughs> I didn't know Boogie Nights is about football. That's cool. <laughs> Throwing them long. Yep. Well, it's uh, we're doing all Parks and Rec, so what all should parks we call this episode? So, I was thinking Parks on the side or doubling it up with Parks, Parks, and Rex, Rex. What you got? <laughs> park, Park, Rec, Rec. I like it. All right. Cue it up. I found an 8-bit... Um, Intro to Parks and Rec. I'll insert that right here. We're going to play a wonderful game called Dad Fights. Welcome to Dad Fights. Ever wonder what would happen if you put two TV dads in the ring? Find out with your hosts, Adam and Jeremy. I wish to be a dad. dad. Who's ready for some fatherly advice? Or a heavy blow to the skull? Dad. Dad. You got some for Arnold? Uh, Arnold. Like some candy or protein powder? What do you got to offer up to Arnold? Oh, speaking of Arnold, did you see... Uh, I watched this little breakdown of uh, the last episode of Stranger Things, and the sword that Hopper uses is Conan's sword. It's actually the prop from the Conan oh, movies. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, that's a cool little connection. Do you think Conan's going to show up in season five? He should. Yeah. And then you'll ask about our dads. Then you'll ask about our dads. Yep. Here we go. Season five of uh, Stranger Things right here. <laughs> you tell me, who is your daddy and what does he do? All right. Well, uh, my dad this week is Ron Swanson. He's a legend in the Parks and Rec Department. He is a supervisor there. And, well, he doesn't love his job. He doesn't love governmental bureaucratic oversight. He's a... Uh, I guess he's a libertarian if he doesn't like big government. Yeah. He loves breakfast foods. He wants all the bacon. He's been married to two, not just one, but two. Oh, shit, I forgot his wife's name. Do you remember her name by chance? Tammy? Tammy? Ta Tammy? Yeah, two mm -hmm. Tammies. A tale of two Tammies. His newest wife, though, is Diane, a.k.a. Xeno Warrior Princess. 
aka Silent Number Three or Five. I don't know. She's she's a robot lady. And they got two. Uh, they got two, two stepdaughters, Ivy and Joey. And Ron's got a son of his own, and his name is Little John Swanson. Little Johnny. Yep. Nice. Uh, well, Jerry, Gary, Larry, Terry, whatever you want to call him. Um, it's a good old man. Uh, he did start off. Uh, he is a Parson Rex. Uh, department employee. Uh, he ends up being the mayor of Pawnee, and he's just a big old doof, man. He's just a good guy. He has his lovely wife, Gail, who's uh, smoking hot, and he's got his three uh, super attractive daughters, which I don't have their names because I couldn't find them. So three three blonde daughters. Yeah. Mr. They all Gergich. look like their mother. Ken Gerch. Yep. So I was going to make a Brady Bunch joke, but I couldn't connect the dots fast enough. It's all good. Swing and a miss. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, Jerry, good guy. He's a good guy. Do you want to talk about some some jams you've been listening to this week? Yeah, let's talk about some music. Cue it up. Cue, do it. Album of the week. Album of the week. Album of the week. All right, so uh, this one was a pleasant surprise. I had a... I think it was, I think it was like something on Facebook, like on Mike Patton's page, and I, and he said something about his band Dead Cross. I was like, Dead Cross? I never heard of them, and I love my Mike Patton, so uh, I checked it out, and that's pretty much my album of the week, Adam. It's their self-titled album, the first one, Dead Cross, and the song I'm gonna go with is "The Future Has Been Cancelled." And I freaking love this band, man. It's like Mike Patton death metal, like you said, like was it post punk? Is that what you called it? Or no? Yeah, it's punk. like very like avant garde, goth, post punk mixed with metal, and it's really yeah. cool. It's really cool, man. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's Mike there's Patton. There's a cool uh, cover of Joy Division's. Um, or not, was it Joy Division? No, they covered Bauhaus. They covered Bauhaus's yeah. Bella Gosi is dead. That's a good one. It is a good one, and they did an excellent cover. Yeah. I like it. I like it very much, though. Yeah, really it makes good. me want to dress up like Wednesday Adams and then do that funny TikTok dance that all the yeah <laughs> all the kids are doing. The Wednesday Adams dance? Yeah. What you got, man? All right. Well, this week I was listening to a band called Skin Flint. Uh, they are a black metal band from Botswana. I didn't know Botswana has a huge death metal scene. And uh, when I heard the song, it was on Spotify under a metal playlist. And I'm like, this song sounds like an 80s thrash song. I'm like, this is really cool. Let me check it out who it is. And I'm like, oh, they're a new band? I'm like, that's cool. But they sound like um, early Metallica meets early Megadeth. Yeah, that's a, I guess a good way to put it. It would have been what what could have been if uh Mr. Uh, Mr. Mustaine didn't leave the band. True. Yeah. That that's huh. it. Yeah. Cool. And if he was from Africa. Cool. Oh, even better. I'm gonna check it if out. If Dave Mustaine went to Africa and get, and found a drummer and a bassist, that's this band. So it's Sepultura Megadeth, but in Africa. Fuck yeah, dude. Got it. Yeah, that they're a three piece band and they fucking shred, man. Ooh. Cool. Um, the song I'm going with is a song called Sink Inda. Sounds like 80s black metal or thrash, and it's really cool. The album's called Ninyemba. I can't. I don't know. I don't. I don't speak other language, but I'm just gonna butcher the album title. But yeah, check them out. They're fucking awesome. Nice. Oh, and speaking nice. of Cliff and Megadeth, or not Megadeth, Metallica. There's a new B 
beer called uh, Cliff and Mall. It's an IPA, like 9% alcohol. Look for it on mm. shelves. It's got Cliff Burton on the can. It looks fucking awesome. Cool. Speaking of drinks, I was about to take a drink, but then I saw <gasps> Oh, this, no. This, oh, no. Did you this... cover your drink? Did you put one of those, like, koozie top toppers? Have you seen that? Yes, and I did because of this okay. guy wearing a sweater yeah. talking about putting Just lurking, in a... lurking in the Kodaks. corner over there. Yep. Wonder pens or whatever. <laughs> oh, now he's in my ear whispering. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jeremy's video game ADD. All right, Adam. So this one's like super cool, dude. Um, this one I saw a preview for it. Like, way back when, like, back, way back when, holy crap, and it's not even way back when. Sorry, I just had a realization of time, but uh, it was back in, like, 2014, dude. I saw a video, and it was this cat, like, walking through, like, a cyberpunk alley, and it looked, like, super cool, and, like, the graphics were amazing, but uh, nothing came out around that time, and it was this game, and this game finally came out, like, a couple weeks ago. It is called, oh, no, last week, it's called Stray, and it's about a little cool-ass cat who's, like, chilling in a town, or city, I guess you could say, with a bunch of robots, and trying to find out uh, his, their memories for another robot that he saves. And you're a cat. It's like Prince of Persia, cat, detective, cyberpunk. Yeah. It's awesome, dude. It's really cool. It's fun. Yeah, I looked at the uh, the gameplay of it. It reminds me of that game for PS4 Detroit. Oh, really? Well, that's kind of what it looks like. I don't know. I can see, I can see, yeah, like the camera angles and shit and how they yeah. show the walking and stuff. Yeah, I can see where you get how that. How it's like first, or not first, but third person and yeah, going through a city and yeah, a bunch of robots. Yeah, the yeah, game looks sick. Robots. Yeah, when we yeah, hang out good. next week, uh, I definitely want to check that out. And the yeah, Loop yeah. Hero game. Yeah. yeah, the Loop Hero. Yeah. No, I got a whole bunch for you. So you got nice. State Night or something. <laughs> I didn't know they've been working on this for six years. No, eight years. Eight, yeah, man. That's crazy. That's good though. They took their sweet time and they came out with a masterpiece because it's like, it's like people are ratting and raving about it. So yeah, it's really good, dude. Nice. From beginning to end, like you, how you collect things, you just go. It's like an adventure game. Yeah, it's cool. Who's dude. the developer on this one, or who put it out? Uh, no, no big name. I I forget. I forget the name. So there you go. I yeah, I can't oh, even remember. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It looks like something EA or even Rockstar would put out. Like it's the that. It looks like the Unreal, the new Unreal Engine. Like it looks dope. Yeah, it's good, man. It's it's super legit. It's really good. Well, should we do the uh, favorite segment, the good old family fun facts? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cue it up. A do 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 do. Family fun facts. Well, old Ron. He's um. He's a raging technosexual, and if you don't, if you're unfamiliar with the term technosexual, you can go back to our Cliff vs. Data episode of Dad Fights, or you can check out Starfle- Starfleet Academy Dropout, wherever you get your podcast. Look it up. Me and Jeremy talked about technosexuality for like 10 minutes straight, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> anyway, uh, old Ron... Um, he wanted to learn more about his technosexuality, and he joined. Uh, he joined up uh, the space navy, the space force, and he uh, got assigned to the Battlestar Galactica. He ended up rescuing a Cylon, Cylon number three, and then he moved to Pawnee, Indiana, and took a desk job. Look at that, Ron. Good Get job. it, dude. Get it. Get that robot. Gary, Jerry, Larry, and Terry. Um, Jack of all trades, this guy, man. Super very helpful guy. Uh, he was a plumber for a, a house of kids who had no parents. It was a, a party of five. He was a maintenance guy for... Uh, we had this guy's brother on this season's episode, but uh, he helped out Drew Carey and his needs. Um, he was an adoption uh, worker for a group of quote-unquote friends. Um Detective for Larry David helped him out, and he was also a doctor for the gang in Philadelphia. So uh, that's right. Yeah. that's right. B- busy man, this guy. But uh, that's my family fun fact. What you got, dude? 
You already did it. So I already did it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Do another one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Should we uh, start this fight up? Should we uh, have the lovely Jay explain the rules of dead fights for us? Each dad has 23 hit points. Using a polyhedral eight-sided die, most commonly used for tabletop RPGs, each host will call an attack and roll the die. Number rolled determines damage. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. All right, since we're not in person, um, let's go ahead and roll. See who goes first. You ready? Oh, uh, can I interrupt real quick and explain a podcast I was going to do? Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, sorry to interrupt. I just want, really want to talk about this podcast. Uh, it's about starting a podcast and the steps of doing it. And one of the key steps is I'm going to use, and let everyone know, that I'm going to use Buzzsprout to get it out to everyone. And everyone can learn do how it. to do podcasts like me. And you, it'll go out to all the podcatchers out there, so you can catch it anywhere you want it. And you can learn the steps. And if you click on our lovely link on our shit, you will get a wonderful $20 gift card for Amazon to where you can buy, I don't know, what would you what would you buy, sir, if you're in that situation? Um, I'd buy a copy of Kevin Smith's book, Tough Shit, because uh, he talks about starting a podcast in, I think, Chapter 13. Oh, perfect. Have you read that Lucky. book? It's amazing. I have not, but now I should. Oh, it's, and yeah, thank it's you. it's really fucking good. Sweet. But, uh, yeah, man. And then we use them, and it's great. So, uh. Plug it out and back to the fight. All right, sir. Let's do this. All right. Let's do All right. You ready to roll to see who goes first here? Oh. Hang on. I got to roll my 15 dice to see which one's the highest. One second. I forgot to do that. Uh, we'll go. Oh, what? I just rolled three eights. <laughs> oh, shit. I just wasted them. Should we just cue up the, uh, the music and just close it out? Yeah. <laughs> this fight is over. <laughs> Go buy some scratch off tickets. Holy shit, yeah. I should have. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I'm ready to roll now. All right. Three, two, one, roll five. Holy crap, dude. I rolled an eight. Nice. I rolled a seven. Take it away. Damn, I rolled all these eights. And then in the fight, I'm going to roll no eights. Here we go. All right. So uh, Gary, Jerry, Larry, and Terry, he's coming out. To uh, the good old song, It's a Family Affair by Sly and the Family. And uh, he's coming out dressed like Dynamo from the badass 80s movie, Running Man. Nice. Yep. It's electric. Well, Ron, Ron's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. He's uh, combing out his mustache, and he's jumping into Ferrari, and he's driving in circles. And, uh, well, he jumps back out of the thing, walks up, and he's walk strutting on up to... Uh, the Magno. Sweet. All right, well. Jerry, he's coming out. Just how he always is, carefree. And here he goes with trying to do a carefree kick. See what happens here. Oh, not too much. It was a three. All right, well, uh, Ron, he's shaking that off. And he, oh, what's this? He... Busts out his saxophone. Uh, He's doing the Duke Silver drop kick. Nice. And that's a two. Well, that's going to be a long match. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. I even wrote extra text for that occasion. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Larry, Larry's coming out and he's doing the good old fashioned Gurgich grapple. And that's a six. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Nice. Um, well, Ron, he is, he's asking a question. He says, a salad? I'm like, you don't make friends with salad. You don't win friends with salad. You don't win friends with salad. He said, this is food that my food eats. Front kick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's seven. Nice. All right, so for all those number munchers, uh, Ron brought it right to an even match. We got 14 hit oh, points nice. for both. Both uh, nice. side daddies. Nice. All right, well, uh, Larry. Larry's coming out here. And Larry's doing this for his his favorite homie. He's doing the Leslie Nope off the top rope splash slam. And that's a five. Not too nice. bad. Nice. That's straight WWE right there, man. Yep. Straight up. 
All right, we're on. He says, I hate skim milk. And then he's pointing at his nipples and he's saying, milk, milk. He points his dick, says lemonade. Turns around, points at his asshole and says, around the corner, fudge is made. And then he does a front kick <laughs> to Jerry's stupid head. <laughs> here we go. It's the kind of damage he does here. And that's a five. All right. That's well, damn. tied up at nine. Damn. Tied up at nine again. All right. Well, uh, Terry, Terry's coming in and uh, he's doing this for everyone in his hometown. He's doing the Pawnee Punch. And that's a six. All right. Getting nice. there. All right. Well, Ron. Well, Ron says, I want some eggs and I want all the bacon. This is all the bacon spinning back fist. So, kind of damage it does here. That's a four. Oh, damn. All right. Here we go. So, uh. You got a fun finisher for this? Yes, I do. And here it goes. Gary is coming out. And what's what's this? Someone come out dressed dressed just like him. He has a name tag. His name is Jerry. But another guy's coming out. His name is Larry, and another guy named Terry. Turns out he uh had multiple personalities, or what? What? It's a uh, oh, it's just a bunch of clones. I'm like multiplicity or something. Michael Keaton. I don't know. But uh, they're all running in, and they're doing the multiply death attack. Here we go. And this match is over with the seven. Nice. Take that, Ron. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, put it in the Street Fighter <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> nice, Jerry Gergich. Damn, Our, dude, would, I really hope known? Jerry fights... Um, Oh, who won from the office? It was Stanley. Stanley. I really yeah. hope it's Stanley, Jerry, in the finals of the Kumite. That'd be a good one. So that's my prediction. Nice. Uh, speaking of fights and Kumites, uh, who we got going on next week, dude? Uh, next week we have Curb Your Enthusiasm versus the Goldbergs. And since you won, which uh, which version of that guy would you like? Who, uh, Mr. Goldberg or Mr. I don't know, Larry's buddy, <laughs> Larry's homie. Um, I will go with I'll go with the Goldbergs. All right, and I'll go with uh, oh Larry's Larry's pal. I can't can't I forgot what his name is. That's all good. That's all right. So we got a side meta episode. Nice. Yeah, dude. Side meta. By Menon. Remember those commercials? I don't remember what those were <laughs> yeah. for. Wasn't it? Wasn't it like, like, like Advil or something? But it wasn't for men. For your dick? <laughs> Is it for dick yeah. pills? For dick pain. Advil for your dick? I got a yep. dick egg. Take. Oh, by Menon. By Menon. <laughs> Save from charms. You got a you got a lovely pitch for us, sir. I do. Let me, uh, I think I've scribbled it out on my phone. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> Adam, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Wait, what? Bye, men. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Now, now it's going to be stuck in my head for like the next like three days. <laughs> Let me Google that. Or forever. What, what product that was for. Bye. Menon. Hi, Menon. Jingle. Well, now you gotta edit it in. You have to. Let the wide stick give you the edge. Speed stick, super dry, antiperspirant. By Menon. Speed stick for your dick. <laughs> By Menon. <laughs> All right. Speed mm. stick for your dick. A doo doo doo. Now Adam has a pitch. Boo doo doo doo. my notes app. Pulling out his notes. Do 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 do. Grab him a towel. Sploosh 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 sploosh. Sorry, got it. Got out of hand at the end. Hey dude, so um, I did the free trial for Shutter, so I can watch uh, the. Oh, movie. did you watch it? Not yet. But I'm going to. Oh, okay. Have you watched it? No, I was actually gonna do it this weekend, and then yeah, that's, that's my goal. Information. 
I'll, oh, you're doing the trial too? Yeah, I mean, I really don't have any reason to watch that because I feel like all the classic horror movies I like are on Prime now. Yeah, and I looked, I was like, there's nothing really, meh. There's creep show TV show. I was like, oh, I like creep show. Yeah, I then they know. um they have like classic um, uh, what's the dude's name? Kaufman, Lloyd Kaufman. They have all his films. Oh. Yeah, I saw that. So I feel too, like yeah. that may be a reason for me to get it, but like I've seen all those. Yeah, the the traumas and stuff. Yeah, the trauma yeah. movies. Yeah. But my pitch this week. Oh shit! Here's the pitch. <laughs> Since uh, since Prey comes out, I guess tomorrow from the date that this airs, so it'll be the fifth. The newest Predator movie, and I thought we should make a Predator movie, but instead of people, it's gonna be monsters fighting an alien. So it's basically gonna be Predator meets the Monster Squad, but instead of like classic TV and movie monsters. When I go with like American fol- folklore monsters like the Moss Man, the Jersey Devil, Bigfoot, Chupacabra, and a Skinwalker, and they all get flown into uh, South America and fight the predator in the jungle. Nice. I don't know what we're gonna call this like monsters v predator, monsters and aliens. Predator Squad. Predator Squad. I fucking love it, dude. We gotta throw a mummy in there just to go. Predator bad. <laughs> then someone's got to say, you're, you're one ugly motherfucker. Isn't that, doesn't Arnold say that to the Predator? When the Predator finally takes off his mask? Does he say like, oh, you're one, one yeah, you're one ugly motherfucker. It's very rude, Dylan, Arnold. you son of a bitch. Want some chew? It'll turn you into a sexual tyrannosaur. But don't take my word for it. 